Hey everyone, this is Joel Anji, and I want to welcome you to this tutorial on building a gulp build system. Now there's a lot of uh, video tutorials out there showing you the basics of how to set these things up, but this video tutorial is going to be focusing on building a complete um, build system from the ground up. Now there's literally hundreds of ways that you could do this, so I'm just showing you my current build system. And uh, it may not be right for you, but at least it may give you some directions to create your own build system. The first video in this series will cover some of the basics if you're new to front-end workflows. Now I know when I started myself, I was having a little bit of difficulty trying to figure out how all the different pieces work together, especially things like package managers. But hopefully this first video can uh, shed some light on some of those things. So what is a build system? A build system is simply a collection of tasks, commonly known as task runners, that automate repetitive work. Now these tasks can be anything from compiling pre-processed CSS and JavaScript to concatenation, minification, firing up a server for automatic browser reloading, and even things like uh, creating deployment builds. Now a build system usually works with other tools, including package managers. So let's take a look at a few of the components in a modern front-end workflow. Three common components that you might see together are package managers, preprocessors, and the actual task runners, which is your build tool. So first off, we have package managers. And package managers automate the installation, upgrading, and removal of the required dependencies, including packages and libraries that you use in your dev environment. In a lot of build systems, you're going to run into two different kinds of package managers. The first one is Bower, and the second one is NPM, or Node Package Manager. Now, it can get a little bit confusing on how these different dependencies are handled and which dependencies are handled by either Bower or NPM. So think of it this way. Basically, Bower manages your front-end dependencies, uh, dependencies such as jQuery, Backbone, Angular, JS. And NPM manages your dependencies within the actual Node.js environment, sort of like your utility modules that you use to actually create your build, such as Gulp, Browser Sync, and Plumber. Now, you've probably already been working with preprocessors, so this is a familiar one for you. Uh, things such as SAS and LESS. On the JavaScript side, we've got uh, CoffeeScript, TypeScript, and Examples with HTML would be Haml, Jade, Markdown, and Slim. As you know, its preprocessors are critical to an efficient workflow. They add features and optimize syntax that compiles into its native language. Not much more to say on this one. You're probably already using these and are familiar with how they work. So now we get down to our actual build tools, such as Gulp and Grunt. Both run on Node and both have a similar anatomy. Taking a look at a typical gulp file, you can see that it's broken down into four separate components. Again, this is not a tried and true uh, rule, but a generalization. So the first part we basically have at the top of the file is the area where we're declaring our required dependencies. Uh, this is an area where we actually declare things such as gulp and any related modules that we need for our build. The next three sections all have to do with various kinds of tasks. As you can see, the main bulk of the gulp file are basically set up with tasks that you name yourself. We'll call them name tasks. These could be anything from compressing static images to copying files to creating your deployment build. In this case, we've set up uh, four different tasks, one of which we called scripts. And within that scripts code, we basically would uglify, concatenate, and then rename these to the extension min.js. We will take a look at how we can run these name tasks when we start to code everything up in an upcoming video. One interesting thing to note, to run these name tasks, all you need to do to invoke them is to type the command gulp along with the name of the task into your terminal. So in our case, to run the task we named scripts, we would type the command gulp scripts. So the next two tasks we're gonna deal with are optional, but you'll pretty much see them in every gulp file you encounter. Uh, the first one we're going to deal with here is called the watch task. The purpose of the watch task is to watch certain files and folders for changes. And then when those changes occur, run a named task. So in this case, we're watching two different tasks. As they change, they would run the named task that we specify inside our watch function. 
Now the last task you'll typically encounter is called the default task. You can think of the default task as the task that kicks off all the other tasks. Now when you run the command gulp in your terminal, it runs the default task, which basically holds an array of named tasks. Now these all fire off asynchronously, so you have to realize that all these are happening at the same time. This is the default behavior, but it can be overridden if you need things to fire off in a specific sequence. And we'll actually do that in an upcoming video because we'll have to define a specific sequence when we do our final build. Before we end this video, I'd like to talk about one last subject. There's a lot of debate on whether you should use Gulp or Grunt for your main build tool. Now, the main thing to understand is it really doesn't matter. They both do the same thing. However, I think Gulp has a little bit of a lead in a few areas. Now, when it comes to popularity, Grunt is definitely the big kid on the block. It's older and it has more plugins, but Gulp is really gaining a lot of popularity. And uh, I was even reading in a recent article that Google's using it in their web starter kit. Now, here are the two main reasons that I personally chose Gulp. I think the learning curve on Gulp is much easier to learn, and it's also easier to maintain. Basically, when you come back to it a few months later, it's much easier to pick up where you left off. I know when I was using Grunt, uh, a lot of times, if I hadn't worked with it for a few months, I'd come back and realize that I had, had totally forgotten how the whole thing was set up. Gulp uses the philosophy of code over configuration, while Grunt uses a lot of configuration. And I found the syntax to be overly verbose and a little bit hard to remember. The other reason I chose Gulp is due to speed. Basically, Gulp is a little bit faster because it uses streams, which are readable, writable data that can be modified or piped in a Unix fashion and allows for this data to be piped from one function to another. Like I mentioned before, it's asynchronous, so it runs with uh, maximum concurrency. While Grunt, on the other hand, is a little bit slower. It has to write files to a temp file and then repeat the process for each task. And ultimately, if the build gets very complicated, this can slow things down. Well, there it is. We've reached the end of this video. And if you're still feeling confused, uh, don't worry, because we've got two more videos coming up that I'm sure once we actually get into the code, it's gonna make a lot more sense. I'd like to also preview a little bit what we're gonna be doing in part two. We'll be setting up SAS and Compass, also using Suzy and Breakpoint. I think this is a really good combination. It doesn't muck up your uh, HTML with unnecessary classes. We'll also be setting up uh, a little bit of the JavaScript tasks. We'll get Git going. We'll set up Bower, and we'll also do the basic installation and set up for a gulp. If you like this video, please subscribe and feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'll be talking a lot more on this channel about JavaScript, HTML5, and the design behind web design. So I hope to see you in the next video.